From the heartland of America to every nation on earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are Drs. Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Impey Presents. I trust that at the end of this program your heart will be uplifted in spite of everything going on in the world, so many things that we'll be talking about globally. But the first one, whoa, Neil Armstrong, oh what a man he was, left big footprints on both the moon and the earth. He certainly did. And President Obama faces historic challenge. And America, a disabled nation? A big question mark on that one, friends. We will discuss that in length. Now, before we get into Neil Armstrong, something has just been brought to our attention that we would like to put on the screen. And here you see it, platform change on status of Jerusalem. Can you imagine that, picking out? Actually, Jerusalem sparks debate. Now, this comes out of Charlotte, North Carolina. The Democratic Party released a 2012 platform saying if you are on our platform, you will have to adhere to some of the things we're saying. And it has to do with Jerusalem, first of all, and something much greater. Jack? You know, I love humor, but I have put it away for today because I am angry. I believe what this book says in Ephesians 4.26, be you angry and sin not. And I'm angry about three things. I'm putting aside many of the articles we are going to use for the weather and everything that's been happening to give you this breaking information, breaking news. First of all, they are not to mention the term God. Mm. I'll tell you that goes against this holy book. The fool hath said in his heart there is no God. You know what the actual Hebrew is? The fool has said in his heart, there's no God for me. I don't want him. Some of you Democrats are saying that right now. And that's, of course, Psalm 14, 1 and Psalm 53, verse 1. Secondly, they say, do not mention Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, as the capital for the Jews. Why not? 930 times the Holy Bible says that Jerusalem belongs to the Jew, the Israeli part of that nation. And here we have a president, and you've heard me say it many times, I'm going to say it again, he's behind it. He said, I'm going to give Palestine Jerusalem after the election. He wants to hang on to the Jewish vote, you know. And thirdly, and I didn't want to say this two weeks ago until I have it documented. And I got four different stations from the Middle East, Arabic stations, who've said this is factual. And it's that this man who has become the president of Egypt, and that is Mohammed Marsi, is coming to the White House. He will be honored. He's going to be sent away with another $1 billion to support Egypt. And this is the man who, early August, started hanging Christians on trees, crucifixions, naked. I'm mad. Oh, my. Breaks my heart, doesn't it, you? I wonder if they're going to take the signs down over the judges that says, in God we trust. It's everywhere, friends. The United States was built on loving God. Oh, my, oh, my. We're going to go on with something a little a bit lighter here to begin our program, though. We'll always keep in mind a special date. July 20th, 1969, of course, that is when Neil Armstrong fulfilled an age-old human dream of becoming the first man to walk on the moon. Take a look. Armstrong, his explorer's spirit strong until the end. And he left big footprints on both the moon 
and the earth. And of course, that is so very, very true. We'll never forget him. And what a thrill it was for us to see him step on that moon deck in 69. That was great. Oh, what a great man he was, Rexella. Yes. And you know, when they praised him, he had such humility. He said, no, no, no. There were over 300,000 people who were behind this project. Give them the credit. Whoa, man of humility, yeah. wasn't he? Well, you know what, Al? This is very special to Jack, especially. The same day, July 20th, 1969, someone took a space trip to his eternal home. And there you see him. That's Jack's grandfather and grandmother. He left this earth July 20th, 1969. He went to heaven. There they are in Itterhem, Belgium. You got to see this next picture, too. There's Jack with his grandfather and his father in Itterhem, Belgium. That's before I ever knew you, Jack. Handsome there, too. But how wonderful that your grandfather stepped into heaven the same day. He would have nothing to do with God. And when we were there, we led him to Jesus. And he got himself into a little Christian reform church there in Belgium and grew in the Lord. But was I shocked the day I heard that Neil Armstrong stepped on the moon because it was the same day that Grandpa took a step into heaven. And that's where we go. You know, people don't understand this. I recently had a funeral and mentioned this for one of our employees who went to be with the Lord, Jim Taylor. And I said, you see his body in the casket here. But there's a three-part nature to man, body, soul, and spirit. That's his body there, but his soul and spirit are with the Lord. You see, as the body without the spirit is dead. James 2, 26, where does it go? To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Second Corinthians 5, 8, and that's not only instantaneous, it's simultaneous, instantly he's there. And oh, people say, well, what can they do on the other side? You need a body to communicate. No, you don't. There are no bodies in heaven outside of Christ, Enoch and Elijah. How do they communicate? Spirit form. You only need bodies to be seen here on earth. God is and was a spirit. John 4, 24, the Holy Ghost was and is a spirit. John 16, 12, Christ was that spirit that became a body to take blood into that body to die for sinners because it's the blood that makes an atonement for the soul, Leviticus 17, 11. And without shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins, Hebrews 9, 22. So Jesus came and he died on the cross for you and me so we could have eternal life. And Grandpa believed that message. And the same day he stepped into glory. Oh, Jack, what a beautiful yeah, story. Yeah. Isn't it a beautiful story? How wonderful, absent from the body, present with the Lord. We well, you know, friends, it's really too bad, isn't it? Neil Armstrong did not live to see another huge space touchdown, August 6, 2012, just this year. NASA celebrates Mars rover landing. Whoa! Mars landing gives U.S. space program a boost, and it certainly did. And rover probes secrets of Mars. There's so many secrets up there. Oh my, oh my. And Voyager approaches edge of solar system. Now, you know, friends, I just have to say this before we go to Jack. We can't even imagine how huge the heavens truly are, Jack. We, we can't even imagine the billions of miles God created. Now, let me shock you. When Neil Armstrong stepped onto the moon, that was only 240,000 miles in space. But right now, Rover has landed on Mars, and that is 15 billion miles in space. And Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 left this Earth in 1977 and took 35 years of man-made machines to reach 15 billion miles into space. But get ready for a bigger shock. What? They tell us that by 2014, Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 will leave the solar system. Do you know that here our galaxy has 100 billion planets? 100 billion? And we're going to leave it 
in 2014. And then Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 will go on for 200,000 years before it reaches the next star. And after that, 187 trillion billions of miles is the third heaven of 2 Corinthians 12, 2, where our God is and where Grandpa stepped his foot into on that glorious day. No wonder the Bible says the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Day unto day utter speech and night unto night showeth knowledge. There is no speech, no language where their voice is not heard. Oh, looking to see you soon, Grandpa. Jesus is coming. And you know when we travel at 187 trillion billions of miles at the rapture, come up hither, Revelation 401, and we go up in the twinkling of an eye, 11 one hundredths of a second, that's 1 Corinthians 15, 52. What a trip it's going to be. <laughs> oh, Jack has spoken, in fact, uh, last week or the week before, about the New World Order. Jack, could you sort of uh, give us a capsule of that once again to get into this? Yes, Rick. So, first of all, the Bible teaches that a world dictator is going to come to power. And that is Revelation 13, 1. And this dictator has control over all kindreds, tongues, people, and nations, verse 7. And all the world worships him. You saw what they did in 2008 and 9 concerning this president. Not only that, but this leader gets to the point where he thinks that about himself. He shall magnify himself above every god. Daniel 11, 36. Why is that? Because when he arises, there's a false prophet also in Revelation 13, beginning with verse 11, who promotes the worship of the world dictator. And this one has the two horns of a lamb, but he speaks as a dragon. The two horns of a lamb identify him as a Christian apostate who's defected from the faith because Jesus is the Lamb of God. But he speaks as a dragon, and that identifies him with apostasy and being united with demonic spirits. And that's Revelation 20, verse 2. Then Saudi Arabia, Jordan are saying, we want this man, Obama, to come and set up the peace. That's why he's making the promise that he'll give Jerusalem to the Palestinians. Now, why did Henry Kissinger and George Bush Sr. and Gorbachev all talk about this new world order, the one world government? in their time, because it has arrived. How do I know that? In Revelation 17, 10, it says there will only be seven world empires in history. And in Revelation 12, 3, Revelation 13, 1, and Revelation 17, 3, 7, and 9, five instances, it mentions who the seven are. What? Come on, get out your history books. Assyria, Egypt, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, and revived Rome, all right? Well, they'll become a world global monstrosity. And out of that will come 10 heads. What? Yeah. That's Daniel 7, verses 7, 8, 20, 24, Revelation 13, 1, and Revelation 17, verses 3, 7, 12, and 16. Now, what does this mean? Man, this is exciting, Rexella. First of all, the seven world empires were four that are now Muslim nations, and three that are European nations, the Roman Empire. But as they come together, and they all come together because you've got to have both groups to have a world government, they will form a ten-division world empire. I used to see ten nations. No, Rabbi Hagian, the great rabbi, and Jerome, who wrote the great Catholic Latin Vulgate, both said, the Jew, this is when our Messiah comes, the Christian, this is when Jesus returns. A ten division world empire, I used to preach it was just ten nations. But these two men set me straight that I just named. Now why? What's so exciting about that? There have been seven different groups today who've worked to create this new world order. And the fifth one is the Club of Rome. And they have it on the drawing boards. We showed it to you on the screen two weeks ago. They divided the entire world into a 10 division world empire. And on that beast in Daniel chapter two, verses 32 and 33, it had two legs, one Islamic, 
one Roman. It's here, ladies and gentlemen, and it's being worked out right now at these conventions. Jesus is about to return. Oh my, we said some very, very positive things at the beginning of the program. But now we have to face what uh, has happened just recently with our president and take a look at this. USA Today. Obama faces historic challenge. Anti-Obama documentary elbows into box office top 10. Now that is a movie and it's the 1800 theaters right now. It's among the top 10, of course, and it's called 2016. It reveals a lot. Hit the road, Barack. Why we need a new president? Whoa, on Newsweek? And this is so sad. U.S. hit by weakest post-war rebound. The worst U.S. recession since World War II. And America never imagined a disabled nation. Oh, my. What's driving so many people onto food stamps? 46 million on food stamps. Trying to find a summer job? Take a number. And here's something the president recently gave, a speech in which he said of the economy. We tried our plan and it worked. Not for 22.3% of young blacks, it didn't. And going on, Obama more of a divider than a uniter. Now this is a very famous uh, columnist and his name is Thomas Sowell. And he said, oh, we're so disappointed. We thought that he was going to unite, not divide. And then going on to this one, backlash brewing over Obama's anti-faith actions. Jack, maybe you would like to say something about this. Oh, I will. That is Bishop E. W. Jackson. Backlash brewing. Why? Because of his anti-faith actions. There is a concerted effort to do away with all symbols of our Judeo-Christian culture, to deny our right of conscience in matters of faith, and to attack Christians, Catholic and Protestant. Ooh, that is powerful, isn't it? We're going to go on to somebody else, and it is a lawmaker, and that is Representative Alan West, and this is what he has to say. Lawmaker calls 78 to 81 Democrats right now in Congress communists. Oh, look at this. Communist Party USA endorses Obama again. And Condoleezza Rice, world is... Oh, chaotic and dangerous with a weak USA. I never thought I'd ever see that. Now, Jack, you want to remark about what the congressman had to say. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in trouble. In 2 Timothy 3, 1, it says this, Know also in the last day perilous, dangerous time shall come. And Jesus said in Luke 21, 25, nations will be in distress with perplexity and mass confusion. And Condoleezza was right. And we're in trouble because we're not honoring God. We're going to try to take God out of the platform now. Don't mention a God. God, forgive this godlessness that's going on today in many of our political movements. Not only that, but what should we do about this? If you're a Christian, Romans 16, 17, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine of Christ which you received and avoid them, amen. Ephesians 5, 11, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Maybe it's this group of communists, card-carrying communists in the Democratic Party who are trying to get and eliminate our God. America's in trouble. This was that Christian nation. And we're going down the slide, slippery slope, and fast. And what and who's all behind it? Don't miss this. First John 2.18, Antichrist shall come even now. Are there many Antichrists? And you'll know them because they claim Christianity, then turn from it. So it says they went out from us, but they weren't of us. If they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out and turned their back on Christianity because they were not of us. We need an old-fashioned Holy Spirit revival in America. Oh, Jack, how very, very true. And friends, we need a revival in our hearts, too, to stand firm in our faith. Have you ever accepted the Lord as your Savior? That's why He came. If you were the only one on earth, He would have come for you. How wonderful to have a Savior like this. Will you open your heart to Him? Ask Him to come into your heart, forgive you your sins, and walk with Him a new life. Oh, Jack, pray that prayer of salvation, please. Oh, I want to get tender right now. 
because of this wonderful Jesus, the Savior of the world, the only Savior. You can't get to heaven without him. Lord Jesus, thank you for the cross, that glorious cross on which you died, shedding that precious blood to wash away my sin. There is no other way, Jesus. Thank you for providing it. Now, I ask you to come into my heart. I receive you this day as my own Savior. I pray this in your holy name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I trust that you pray that prayer with Jack, how wonderful it is to be forgiven, forgiven. When God forgives, he forgets. We didn't even do it. How wonderful to be clean by the blood of Christ. Did you pray that prayer? If you did, write me. There is my address. I'll send you this little book. And I love it. First Steps in a New Direction. The Lord Jesus wants to walk with you and give you peace in a troubled world. I trust that you prayed the prayer. So write me if you did. I'll send this to you immediately. I really pray that you will order this wonderful, wonderful offer. No reason to hide. With everything going on in the world, should we hide ourselves in our homes? Are we afraid to speak out as Christians? Dr. Lutzer wrote a marvelous book, and you need to have this in your home. I really, really mean that. Here's our announcer to tell you how you can receive No Reason to Hide. Bob? To order your copy of the No Reason to Hide book with a bonus DVD, Stopping America's Disasters and Decline, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day, 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impey Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, N9A, 6Y1. Oh, thank you so very, very much, Bob. And I want to encourage you to right now order this or write to us and we'll be happy to send it to you. You really, really need to have this. And I want to say that with your order, we'll be sending you this DVD. So I trust that you will be making the call. And Dr. Lutzer, again, I want to thank you for coming and for writing this wonderful book, No Reason to Hide. Friends, I just want to say that sometimes we feel a little bit spiritually low, don't we? You feel kind of like you need a good gas in the, in the gas tank. Let me say this. Low on spiritual fuel, fill up with God's Word. Certainly, Jack gives us God's Word every single week. We need it so much for today. Look forward to being your home again next week. And until then, remember, God cares for you. So do we. Bye-bye.